It sounded like the gun range at my apartment, and that's not a great, fun thing to happen. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of PSR, sometimes referred to as shoot repeat, but YouTube's a ban that word, at least on my channel. So we're going to bleep it out or replace it with uh, sounds. So why am I here talking? Why am I here? It's a little story time. And I hope you're ready for a little story, because I got one for you. And it's a true story, something that happened that I kind of witnessed, at least somewhat. Um, it's going to be about the time, um, not too long ago, when I listened to a double homicide. Quick reminder, guys, this channel is sponsored by KAK Industry. And you know what? KAK... They are cranking out all sorts of AR parts. They crank out so many AR parts, I, I get dizzy sometimes thinking about it. They just got some brand new machinery in their facility in Albany, Missouri, that's cranking out BCGs. So these BCGs are high quality and they are affordable, as well as the other parts that they offer. You would never, ever, ever go to KK Industry, never go there, never use the code PSR for 10% off. Never do, don't ever do that horrible thing. So thanks again to KAK for sponsoring this channel. A uh, little context. I am in my new house here. I've moved to a better area, thankfully, than I was living. I was living in an apartment complex in an area that wasn't so nice. For the last year, I've been doing that, and it feels wonderful to get out of that area and into a new area that's much chiller, much safer, and I have a house now to myself. So I feel very grateful that that is the case. And I've been settling into this new place. I've got my studio set up now, finally. That's why I've kind of been a little bit MIA over the past couple of weeks. It's been a transitionary time. It's always hard to move. If anyone here has moved, you know it can be a little stressful. It can be a lot of time and money and effort to get yourself settled in. And so I feel like I'm finally almost there and it's it's a good feeling. So hopefully there will be a lot more great content to be filmed here in this new studio, along with just feeling a lot safer, a lot more relaxed, a lot less on edge, I would say. And I've got a whole couple other rooms that I can dedicate towards printers. Whereas in my apartment before, I was basically in my living room doing all of my printing, which is not ideal. We're going to have some more fun printing projects on the way, I promise you. But until then, I'm going to have to hold you over with a little story. Violence is a thing in this country, and a lot of people use guns. And sometimes that happens right outside your doorstep. And uh, that's why it's important to remain vigilant and stay ready to defend yourself and your loved ones. And attempts to disarm you are tyrannical. And it's, it's unfortunate when people think that in a country where guns are everywhere, you not being armed is going to somehow make your life safer. Uh, when we know you're just wanting to protect yourself and you're not trying to harm any other people or things, you just want to protect yourself. That is the crux of the issue, I think, with gun control in this country and people thinking that less guns in the hands of responsible people is going to equate to somehow less violence. So let's get into this little story. It was September of last year. I'm not going to say too much about the area that I lived in other than it's a apart, big apartment complex. So there's units next to units and in addition to just being not a fun place to live, there was like roaches and it, it, it sucked. Uh, don't recommend. Um, I, I'm cool with spiders. Spiders I'm actually chill with. I don't kill spiders. But man, when I see a roach, it's on sight. Run. Yeah, I go ape shit when I see a roach. I, I, I eliminate the roach. They never were fully eliminated. They would just come back. I mean, this was the kind of place where you walk around at night during the summertime and there's just like roaches on the sidewalks. You can't help but sometimes like step on them. It was bad. I think it's because just there was a lot of trash and people did not pick up for themselves, which is always unfortunate. You know, you, you'd think that if you're living in a place, 
you'd want to keep it clean, want to keep the community clean, because it just helps to feel better about your life when things are clean. But this was not the case, unfortunately. And so, yeah, there was a roach infestation found. I mean, these weren't small roaches either. These were like big old fat roaches. But anyway, I went for a run and I came back and saw a bunch of cars lined up in a weird way that it was like the traffic was all the way backed up going past this apartment complex. I turn the corner and I see like all these cop cars like stopping, directing traffic. And now I see some yellow tape at the entrance of where you pull into the apartment complex and there's so many cops, yellow tape. There's a scooter just like laying on the asphalt and it's got like a little evidence kind of thing around it. And I was like, whoa, this is crazy. So I went up and asked the uh, people who were in the office, I was like, what happened? And they're like, no, oh, someone got shot. And I was like, damn. In broad daylight, too, right at the entrance of the apartment complex. Apparently, some guy had gotten uh, upset with another guy over some kind of altercation. And one of them pulled out a gun and, like, threatened the other guy, pointed it at him. And the other guy was carrying and pulled it out and said, okay, well, you're pointing a gun at me. I'm going to shoot you. So they uh, exchanged gunfire, I guess, or one guy got shot. And I don't think he died. I think he survived. I think he got shot in the hip or something like that. But um, yeah, it was a shooting. The first time there was a shooting there, I was like, okay, well, okay. But I guess this is a thing. I mean, I would hear gunshots in the distance, you know, if you're familiar with Living in the city, sometimes you hear gunshots in the distance. It's kind of not an uncommon thing, um, depending on what city you're in, of course. But I would hear guns, gunshots in the distance, and now I wouldn't think too much of it. But, yeah, I was like, okay, that's right at the entrance of the apartment in broad day. Mm, that's, that's fascinating. Okay, well, noted in my mind, okay. And I think it's also important at this point in the story to describe the apartment complex also as having a rule now, this was a rule which I didn't notice in the lease, um, which cannot be legal, honestly, considering the state I live in is a permitless carry state. There is a rule in the lease agreement that says that you're not allowed, there are no firearms allowed on the premises of the apartment complex, which is fucking hilarious and wholly illegal and unconstitutional, obviously. And I broke that rule a lot. Uh, I broke that rule the entire time I was staying there. So if you're watching out this and you know what apartment complex, you're the superintendent. Ooh, surprise. I Scary, scary stuff. I built like probably 50 guns since over the span of the last year uh, in your apartment complex. I didn't just have them. I, I, I spawned them in the apartment. Uh, so yeah, that worked great. And we all know that people who are trying to commit violence against others and, and do harm and do evil things, really, they don't care. If anything, it's a plus if there's a policy of zero firearms on the premises, because you know what that means. That means uh, they're going to have an easy time with whatever they're doing. So I actually noticed that kind of like... Uh, <laughs> After this event happened, which I'm about to describe, there was an email and it was like a reminder that there aren't firearms allowed on the apartment premises. I was like, wow, okay. Great thing to tell people after this this happened is, you know, you can't defend yourself. Just a reminder, you know, there's people coming in here, sh you know, the shooting's happening. Just remember, you can't have your own because we wouldn't want that here. We wouldn't want you being able to defend yourself. Uh, great. Yeah, so... There's a little bit of, of background to this. So no firearms permitted on the premises. And it is a September night. It is about 10.30 p.m. And I am just sitting in my, in my little dining corner of my kind of kitchen dining area. And I'm just scrolling, scrolling through Instagram, as, as one might do on a lazy Sunday evening. I just watched some football or something, you know, classic American stuff just hanging out in my kitchen, scrolling Instagram after watching football. And I don't hear any voices or anything, but I just, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I hear a, like, three pops, like, pop, pop, pop. And I'm like, hmm, that's not a firework, and that is very close to me. And so I'm like, hmm. And then I hear, just a couple of seconds later, 
pop, 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 pop. And I was like, okay, I'm hitting the, hitting the floor because I'm like not trying to be standing up because it is really close. Like, I'm like, they are right next to my apartment. And I was, so I just got down, went into my room, went into my little, little closet area and got my AR because I was like, well, this has got to be happening outside of my apartment and I'm not going to be not armed right now in case whatever, for whatever. But I just got down because I was like, I don't know. And I was like, God, I just don't want to be caught in any kind of like ricochets or anything because they are right outside. And I mean, the out, the things were like the walls were bricks. So I didn't really worry about too much about, you know, bullets, pen. It was particularly because I could tell it was, like, it was definitely pistol caliber or something because it wasn't quite as boomy. If you've been to, on the range, which I've been on a lot and I'm sure you have, you know the difference between a rifle caliber gun shooting versus a pistol caliber it's like a pop pop versus a boom boom and so i was just hearing the pop and the pops keep going they just keep coming pop 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 and these bursts of fire pop 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 pop. and i was like that's got to be 30 rounds at least and then it finally stops and i'm just like looking around and this is a place where i always kept my blinds closed because you could it was like right along the area of the apartment complex where a bunch of people parked and a bunch of people drove by and I was just like, I do not want anyone looking into my apartment. I'm like, that's one of the things I'm so happy about. I was like, in the morning at this new place, I can open the blinds and I can just have the sun coming in and I can look out and um, couldn't do that in my old spot. So I always had the blinds closed and and I'm just like, is it over? So I'm like peeking up and then as soon as I peek up in my room, I see the lights of this car and the hear the sound skirt peeled rubber and I saw the taillights kind of like through like right outside of my window drive by like f- flooring it whip by and I see the car go by but I didn't see what model what make or anything and I was like damn that's definitely just a, a shooting that just happened right outside my door and I was like fuck man there's definitely someone probably dying right outside my apartment right now. In the moment, I was like, well, thinking, like, should I go out and see if they're okay? Should I try to help? Should I try to give them first aid if they're bleeding? And Because I was like, there's got to be someone down. And so I was just in my mind, I was like, but I was not going to go out there. I was like, I'm not going to go out there without a gun. And I was like... There's no way I could hear the people upstairs above me, like running around, like they definitely heard it. Someone called in. I'm, I'm sure someone called nine one one. I was like, the cops are going to be here very soon. I'm sure. Do I want to be at a crime scene with my gun when there just was potentially like, you know, lethal amount of gunshots? Who who knows who's dead? And so. I'd ended up just executive decision. I'm like, ah, kind of want to leave myself out of this. And whether you think that's cowardly or, or just, or smart or, or somewhere in between, it's tough. Cause I did have that instinct of like, someone's, you know, in trouble. Someone just got shot. Should I help them or should I stay? And I ended up just staying. And with what I found out happened at the end, I think it was probably the right decision to, to stay in, but I also didn't know if they were going to come back. It all seemed to kind of go slow because it was just like I was just kind of a little bit in shock. Cause it sounded like the gun range at my apartment, and that's not a great, fun thing to happen. So the cops came five or ten minutes later. First, the police arrived, then two ambulances very shortly after arrived, and I was like, okay, the ambulance is here, the cops are here. Bunch of cops. It looked like they were kind of about 30 yards away from where my front door is. They didn't really knock on my door or anything, so I just I just kind of chill. I'm, I'm not trying to involve myself in this situation, investigation, whatnot. Um, I really, other than the taillights of the car, which I couldn't identify, I didn't know anything other than hearing all of the shots. The one thing I noticed uh, that night was that the ambulances stayed for about an hour and then when they left they didn't have their sirens on so i was kind of hopeful that maybe no one got hurt so uh, lo and behold the following morning i talked to the maintenance guys who i had become kind of cool with kind of friends with and i was you know casually would talk to them every once in a while and i asked him you know i was like hey you hear about what happened last night and i like i was like what well, do you know what happened and he was like yeah 
was like, man, what, what went down? I, I heard the sh- gunshots and he's like, yeah, he's like two people died. And I was like, Oh fuck, man, that's, it's intense. So yeah, two males my age got gunned down and, um, yeah, it was around 30 shots, I think fired. So I don't know who did it. They don't know who did it. I don't know if they've ever, if they ever solved who did it. A shocking thing to have known that there's two people got their lives taken right about, I don't know, about 60 feet, maybe that. Yeah. 30, 30 yards, something like that away from my apartment. And I'm on the ground floor, by the way. So, you know, it was like, I could hear those shots ringing off the, the apartment complex walls kind of right outside. There's a little kind of courtyard area nearby and yeah, brick walls. So that those shots, I could hear them very close. So just a reminder. Yeah. Um, just when you least expect it, something like that can happen and always good to stay ready to protect yourself. I, you know, I, I don't involve myself in anything. I don't know if it was gang related or what, but these two guys no longer alive and it was a shooting and yes, violence does happen. And it's important to remember that as a person who enjoys guns and, and enjoys the the, the the joy of shooting, target shooting and training and all that stuff. People use guns to commit violence against other people in unfair and unjust ways. And it's important to remember to just stay vigilant and protect yourself at all times and be ready to protect yourself. And that's why it's ridiculous to have a rule like no firearms allowed on the premises of this apartment complex and an entire joke that is. Um, and I'm glad that I broke that rule every day. Because there's no way in hell you'd catch me lacking in that apartment complex, especially. Anyway, that was a little story, and I hope this wasn't too boring of a video. Maybe you could kind of listen to it like you listen to a podcast, a short video on YouTube. I know you guys probably are itching for some some more entertaining content. Um, This was just kind of like a little story, and I really do appreciate you guys supporting me and watching the content, even though it's kind of in a little bit of a lull right now. It ebbs and flows. I'm, I've been, like, the last two weeks and the last few months, I've been all over the place. I went to Taiwan. I went to Australia. I moved. I went to the Gundys. It's been a crazy whirlwind, and I can finally feel like I'm now in my new place where I can make new content and uh, really enjoy myself and enjoy the, the space. And we gotta, gonna, we're going to do a whole gun wall, and it's going to be epic. I'm going to set up the GAT Lab print room. Got a couple new printers I'm going to review. Got a cool new Creality one that I'm going to do a review on. So there's a lot of fun content coming. Oh, and also, I know I mentioned this a couple of videos ago, but we've got the Bad Attitude Clear Anodized Upper Receivers. PSR Upper Receivers Bad Attitude. These are now available, and they are shakshi. This is on Hoffman Lower. And they're kind of like the Q Honey Badger, but way less expensive. So um, these are like uh, 475 for the 11.5 and 499 for the 16 inch. Um, and they are clear anodized, so they do have a coating versus the other PSR uppers didn't. So if you're into that kind of stuff, definitely don't check out. Definitely don't go check out Bad Attitude Department and the PSR uppers. Also, you guys, the Pink Glock music video and song release is on the way. I've been, like I said, very busy, and it's going to happen. So also, another painting episode with Print Ross is on the way. So we got, we got a lot of stuff. We got printing content. Uh, we got Bob Ross content. We got Pink Glock content. We may even have a vehicle that I, I may unveil on the channel if you're interested in that one that I uh, took a road trip in. That's another thing I did. I took a road trip across the country in the last four months too. So maybe I'll do another story time about that. But anyway, thank you guys again for watching another episode of PSR. I love you so much. And thanks again for supporting Brent Guns. Bye. ATF agents' wives have boyfriends. 